I want to be very clear. We do not expect harmful levels of radiation to reach the West Coast, Hawaii, Alaska, or U.S. territories in the Pacific. That is the judgment of our Nuclear Regulatory Commission and many other experts. Furthermore, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention and public health experts do not recommend that people in the United States take precautionary measures beyond staying informed. And going forward, we will continue to keep the American people fully updated, because I believe that you must know what I know as president. Okay, I just wanted to get a mic check there, and I've got a system set up now where I myself can do my own mic check because <clears throat> I have two laptops after all. It doesn't make sense, as my wife pointed out, for me not to use one to make sure the sound is coming through. And there's a slight delay. Check, check. I just wanted to get a mic. Okay, 10-4. Okay, thanks very much for joining me. This is Hattrick Penry. I am the host of Hattrick Penry Unbound. And this week we're going to return, in fact, every week from here on out. I'm going to stick to Plumegate. I'm going to hit Plumegate hard. And if I do cover any other topics, it will be brief. Because my specialty is Plumegate, ladies and gentlemen. And Plumegate, for those of you who are new to the broadcast, is, in fact, indeed the world's largest provable cover-up and conspiracy known to man. The largest one I know of. No one has yet sent me provable information on a larger cover-up with more deaths, with more evidence, uh, with more agencies and resources involved, this is the big one. This is the big daddy. Okay, back in February of last year, I broke a number of articles on this. I wasn't the first to reveal it because Informable exposed some of the early uh, uh, FOIA documents, but I took that and expounded upon it and gave the big picture and went into fatality numbers and all that sort of stuff. So. If you will, please go to the screen capture section of Uncovering Plumegate for those of you who are joining me online. And if you're not, I'm just going to read some uh, information from these documents, which would be telephone phone calls in this instance from the 20th of March. My first screen capture, however, is not from the FOIA documents, and I'm going to give you a few outside of the documents to kind of paint a picture, a background picture of what's going on uh, in the real world. Okay, in this first screen capture shows that other countries were warned, were given rainwater warnings after the multiple meltdown at Fukushima, Japan on March 20th of 2011. You know, we weren't given rainwater warnings, not at all, <clears throat> but other countries were. And in this screen capture, you can see the, uh, the outline of the couple holding an umbrella with their child underneath, and there's clouds and rain coming down, and in the rain are the nuclear, the yellow and black nuclear uh, symbols. And obviously, one is Japan. That goes without saying. But Britain, okay, United Kingdom were given rainwater warnings and leafy vegetable warnings. And France, as far away as France, were given rainwater warnings and leafy vegetable warnings. However, in the United States, children and American citizens were indeed sacrificed to protect the nuclear industry. Okay, second screen capture. We're looking at a article from e, &E News. And I suggest you go to E&E &E News and go to Informable. Those are some of the better sites out there right now um, that you can get information on, not just on the FOIA documents, but other uh, items pertaining to the nuclear issue as well. Although, in, in all fairness, probably if you go through my screen caption to what I've collected right now, I am probably the leader in screen captures and amount of documents, material from the Freedom of Information pertaining to Fukushima from NRC. I'm probably the lead on that. I've got the most stuff out there. So if you just go to Uncovering Plumegate or go to my Hattrick Penry, Penry blog, there's a lot of material there for you to look through. And this is titled, this article, Radioactive Rain Causes 130 Schools in Korea to Close, Yet Rain in California Had 10 Times More Radioactivity. Okay, folks. I mean, it's just every time I go back into this stuff, my jaw drops to the floor. I'm like, <clears throat> nothing else is really important to me right now because this is provable. When you, you know, if I were to pursue the case in court, if I was the head of Department of Justice, boy, I'll tell you what, I had subpoenas out by now, and I'd have them on the stand, and I'd grill them. And if they didn't, you know, if they weren't directly involved, I'd find out everything they knew. And they squeal on the stand, folks. When you threaten them with real time in a real federal penitentiary, uh, with general population time in the general population, those guys come clean every time. They're not that loyal to the conspiracy on the lower levels. 
So this shows that while we gave no rainwater warnings in America, in the United States, President Barack Obama, zero, NRC, zero, Department of Energy, zero, CDC, zero, nothing. The best we had was the Attorney General came out momentarily and said, hey, it might not be a bad idea to have some potassium iodine, some KI, in case you need to protect your thyroid. Then an hour or two later, again, on national a mainstream media, she came back out to recant, recant that statement. And obviously, for me, obviously, she got a phone call. You know, they, they get a phone call, it's like Ralph Nader says, and they're elected to office. By the time they get to office, it's almost as if someone intercepts them. Okay, and they totally change. Exactly. That's exactly what happens, folks. Next screen capture is from the legendary Alexander Higgins blog. And I need to check. I don't know. Has he got his blog back up yet? Because there's a lot of good information there when it was up and running before the engineered and directed and intensified storm, Hurricane Sandy, the Frankenstorm, Superstorm. Yes, indeed, they are modifying storms. And that's why we don't have Alexander Higgins' uh, website up right now for us to read articles like this one right here. Nuclear physicist. Most of the plutonium MOX fuel nuclear fallout likely to drop on the U.S. as U.S. plutonium levels at 20-year highs. They test for cesium, they test for iodine, but they don't test for plutonium. Why? Hey, it's around forever, and it's the most dangerous substance known to man. So in a meltdown, if you want to downplay, if you want to make it look that it's not as bad as it really is, you immediately go and test for the two shortest-lived half-lives, iodine and cesium, folks, and then you tell people, hey, it's not that bad. But had you tested for plutonium, uranium, and some of these other substances, you would find out it's much, much, much worse. And that's what Plumegate is, folks. It's a multi-agency, massive, concerted, orchestrated, organized, coherent effort to downplay, to hide, to keep from the public knowledge the fact that this radioactive plume was intense radiation and it struck North America and we have thousands upon thousands of deaths according to the mortality index study, not just one, but I cite three different studies to give you a complete uh, broad spectrum of scientists that have looked into effects not just on humans, but on animals as well, birds in the particular bird study. Okay, next screen capture is just a cover page from the NRC, Freedom of Information Documents, free to the public. You can go online and look through yourself and write an article. I don't delay. Start today. These are telephone uh, transcripts, conversations from March 20, Sunday the 20th, 2011. Remember, it happened on the 11th. Okay, we're now nine days after the multiple meltdown at Fukushima. Reading from the documents on the next screen capture. Jim Wiggins. Okay, it looks like one, two, and three reactors are pretty stable. As for the reactors themselves, five and six, you knew what the story was before. Brian McDermott, yeah. Jim Wiggins. And there's not much on the reactor side at four, three and four. They're still looking at to dump water into the reactor building. It's TEPCO seems to be more optimistic about the success of Unit 3 than we would be. I will kindly remind you now, Unit 3 uh, was using MOX fuel. That is a mixed oxide, plutonium and uranium, very deadly. And, and it's nanoparticles, is my understanding. It's compressed or something. I'm a very Again, I'm a very crude understanding in some of this, but... My understanding is it's nanoparticulates when it does burn and emanate. It's tiny particles that are carried aloft into the air, contrary to the trolls and the shills and the nuclear apologists that will tell you, hey, you have nothing to worry about. You know, someone will tell you radiation never even made it to America. That's how crazy they are. Chairman Jacksco, okay. Jim Wiggins, you know, based on just some visuals you see on the news reporting, it looks like what might be getting in there is nothing more than a mist, you know, they're, they're using this kind of water cannon shot, you know, and by the time it goes up over the top and then back down again, it's sort of misty. Again, this is insightful into the fact that when these things melt, melt down, not if, but when, and if they relicense them, the odds only go up uh, significantly as they, they, they push the limit, push the limit. They should be shut down, but no, they like to relicense. It's all about profit. They'll take the chance. Who cares? The owners, the, the stakeholders, the owners often don't even live in this country. They, they might not even live in this country. They might not live in any country with a nuclear reactor if they have any damn sense. Chairman Jacksco, uh-huh, Jim Wiggins. But their, their TEPCO is, they think they're actually getting water. They may even be getting it into the pool. Chairman Jacksco, how, are we, how would we describe our information flow at this point? Is it better or worse than it's been? Jim Wiggins, I'm not saying, it's not saying much. Chairman Jacksco, okay, so it's still overall limited. Jim Wiggins. The absolute value is, I would rate it as, I guess I would, to be truthful, it would be four. I guess he's on a scale of one to ten here. Chairman Jacksco, okay. Jim Wiggins, okay. And to be gracious, 
it would be barely acceptable. Chairman Jacksco, okay. And, and true to their words, TEPCO was not forthright and honest right from the beginning. They're very clear about that. However, that's no excuse for uh, NRC and DOE, who clearly state in the documents they have all the advantages of knowing about Three Mile Island. Remember, uh, out-of-court settlement, one point something million to a Down syndrome, a family with a Down syndrome child. So, yes, Three Mile did have a plume. Three Mile did affect people. People got cancer from it. They say we have the benefit of knowing all about Chernobyl. Okay, Chernobyl, the fact is, and all these guys know it, if the IAEA says a 1,000 people died in Chernobyl, if WikiLeaks says 500 people died, that is what I kindly refer to as bullshit. Okay, it's total bunk. It has no basis in reality. The independent studies like Yablokov and Nesterenko, uh, you can look in there in the Chernobyl cost and consequences to the people and environment, and clearly we have hundreds of thousands of deaths related to Chernobyl, hundreds of thousands, over 900,000. Okay, I've showed you guys where Bobby One, who does an excellent, detailed, in-depth study of the mortality index, and he is predicting, again, this is an estimate, plus or minus, uh, 1.3 million by the year 2030. Okay, one point, that's in North America. That's in the United States. Again, we were the direct line of fire this time in this meltdown. The Pacific jet stream goes directly from Japan straight to America. The commercial pilots grab it on their way back to save fuel. Okay, so we had Congressman Blumenauer and Boxer writing letters to Jaxco saying, hey, if pollution from China comes over here, uh, shouldn't we be telling people something about this incident? Well, no, no. And again, as I've been very clear, we got no. We didn't even get the damn common courtesy, Barack Obama, okay, of telling us, of giving the rainwater warnings. And today we're going to look at the president's, the president's NARAC modeling, the president's modeling. The president is wanting some models, folks. Now, that doesn't mean they're going to give it to the Japanese ambassador, because I've got another screen capture not pertaining to this particular file that says the Japanese ambassador is not going to be giving a White House NARIC run, which is a plume model. They are not going to give the Japanese ambassador information they have obtained through a plume model run through NARIC or DITRA or whatever it was. And, folks, that's just the kind of friendship and, and, and damn common courtesy and unity we have with the people around the world. Japan, right? Sorry, you can't have a plume model. Uh, the China... China's asking for a plume model. Sorry, you can't have that. We'd have to give it to all the states. The 50 states would want it. The international stakeholders might want it. Sorry, it's just too bad what really happened. We're not going to be able to tell you the truth. Again, I'm telling you right now, thousands, 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 thousands of people are dead as a result of this. Not a single person called into court, not a single subpoena. In fact, the, the focus seems to be on fast and furious. And, and not to detract from that, but seriously, folks, Many, many times that number died. Many times the number of 9-11, and the proof is in the documents. Everything I'm reading to you today is only further nails into the coffin as it should be for the, this nuclear industry. But instead, unfortunately, there seems to be a blackout on information, a suppression of information. And when guys like Arnie Gundershill goes around talking about nuclear energy and the downfalls and pitfalls of it, he is very careful to avoid mentioning what is found and contained within the FOIA documents. Today we'll read, they knew all about number four was dry. Number four has been dry for days and days and days. Power has been out for days and days and days and days and days. The rims are up. The radiation is incredible. The shine is through the roof, folks. And this is all coming across the Pacific. Hawaii hard hit. Canada hard hit. Mexico hard hit. North America hard. Michigan, Florida. Down in Florida we have readings, right? Not from the government, not from the rigged radnet monitors. Not to get off on a tangent, folks, but I'm just giving you a healthy dose of reality. A very healthy dose of reality. You know, DHS and FEMA are tasked with our safety, the safety of the American public. But I put it to you, folks. I stake my word on it. Patrick Penny is here to tell you today. You know what they did? No, they let us take the heat. Literally, the shine, the heat, the radiation, and they protected industry. They did their job, which is protecting government from accountability and industry from accountability and protecting a monopoly, a monopoly that literally is causing the deaths of thousands of people every year. For me, that's unacceptable. I'd rather not have power at all if that's what it comes to. But most of my broadcasts, I begin with a discussion of suppressed technology, suppressed patent suppression in the United States. You cannot have a solar cell over 20% efficient. And if you did, guess what? They spray so much crap in in the air with the airplanes every day, your solar panel's going to not get as much sunlight anyway. It's called global dimming. Global dimming from what? The aerosol spray planes that intensify storms that cause drought. I was reading today about the blue water situation. And did you know we've already signed an agreement, George Bush did, where foreign countries can come into America and take water, 
under certain circumstances, and that is if the drought is bad enough. If the drought is bad enough. Well, folks, the planes fly every day. I put it, you stop the planes and you'll start the rain. Stop the planes and start the rain. Now, back to the documents, not to get distracted, folks. But this is Hatrick Penry Unbound. If it's Hatrick Penry Bound, I'd talk slow. I would only cover a tiny little bit. Okay, Jim Wiggins. But it's, it's you know, you get a lot of, we're getting conflicting information. We're answering questions that people who are getting off of, you know, the Japanese TV broadcast that they're watching. And then we get spend time trying to refute or affirm that kind of stuff. Chairman Jacksco, yeah. Jim Wiggins. So it, it's not, you know, it's nowhere near what it looks like when we do the drills and exercises here. Chairman Jacksco, yeah. Again, kind of uh, shows you you can do a drill, you can do an exercise, but when it really goes down, there's all sort of things you cannot plan for. There's contingencies you cannot plan for. Impossible. Things happen you'll never, you'll never will. The learning curve is not going to be fast enough with nuclear power. Don't let them tell you we're going to learn from this. We're going to learn from these mistakes. Folks, there's before Fukushima on March 3rd, 2011, in my book, and then there's after Fukushima. I've even thought about coming up with a, a BF before Fukushima, an AF dating system, because we're almost on 2 AF, folks, two years after Fukushima. Have you heard of anyone going to jail? Have you heard of anyone talking about what's in these documents? Okay, back to the documents. This doesn't look like when we do the drills and exercises here. Jack Scott, yeah. Jim Wiggins, and actually events that we've done on this side. But, you know, there, I guess you've got to understand, too, it's a fairly dramatic event, and they just don't have a lot of instrumentation. So, Brian McDermott, right. Jim Wiggins. So a lot of it is human, you know. They've got generators running in units five and six like they've had before. Jacksco, okay. Jim Wiggins. But they also got a power line in here. They got a RHR pump going in unit five. Jacksco, okay. Jim Wiggins. And that's progress. They're working, they're installing a electric cables in units one and two today. Probably three and four perhaps by Monday. And we'll see what success uh, they have there. You know, when you start looking at some of these significantly damaged units, you don't know quite what utility that would be. Now, what he's saying in this little section here, and I'll finish the screen capture in a moment, it's very insightful. This is the 20th of March now, okay? They're working on installing electric cables in 1 and 2. It's had no power, no power. Okay, this is nine days later. Chuck Castro says, I've got a clip of him that says, Mark 1 containment, when a station blackout, it's a matter of hours you have a containment breach. Right? That's out of the NEREG manual, and he talks about that. So we see here clearly the, this plant, this facility, Daiichi, was without power. We know now for a fact we're, we're on the 20th, and he's, they're talking about rolling it out. Then you have to build circuit boxes, and it's a mess because the salt water's ruined everything. Do you know how many nuclear plants we have on the coast? Okay, I'm going to go back to the screen captures. Chairman Jacksco, yeah. Jim Wiggins, they might be able to get power to it, but not be able to get anything to work. But, you know, if they can get stuff to work, that's certainly on the good side. Any update on those dose rates? Wait a second. I've accidentally lost my page. Hold on. They might be able to get power to it, but not be able to get anything to work. But, you know, if they can get stuff to work, that's certainly on the good side. Any update on dose rates seems to suggest that things are, as we heard some others, you know, consistent with other information we have. They seem to be dropping in the immediate vicinity of the units. They're still at the tens of rem per hour range, though. It's not, it's not trivial. Okay, we're looking at that. Let me go back to that. Let me not get ahead of myself. Clearly, in this section of the FOIA documents, you can see that when a catastrophic meltdown occurs, you're going to go quite a while without power if it's a tsunami and seawater is involved. You cannot just roll a power cord. You can't go down to Home Depot, buy a 500-foot power cord, and roll it out and crank things back up. Furthermore, when we discuss the Bechtel pumps, these massive pumps they want to bring in and charge Japan $9.6 million for, okay, it's just not that easy. You can't just hook them up. Everybody's fittings are different. The technicians that come with the pumps don't want to go anywhere near Fukushima. It is a major mess. And this is not just one and two. We're talking about three and four, three with a MOX fuel, and number four with all this fuel is offloaded and these massive number of fuel rod bundles are stationed upstairs, brilliant, to put this a pool that cools the spent rods or when you offload them that keeps them cool, it is positioned above the actual containment. And the craziest thing is I'm reading in the documents about the roofs caving in on the spent fuel pool. And you can spray water on them, but the roofs caved in all over it. You know, folks, there's just no, 
Ain't no easy way out when, not if, but when the nuclear plants melt down. Again, a solar panel doesn't melt down. You don't have to have machine gunners guarding a solar panel. It's just such a much safer technology. But again, they restrict it. They suppress the patents. You'll fall off a building or your car's wheel will fall off and you will die as an inventor scientist before you're going to have an 80% efficient solar cell, period. Okay, to the next screen capture. I just want to show you on that one how damn serious it is when there's no power for nine days. And they're, and, and they're talking here about the water cannons and helicopters. That's a joke. That's a joke that doesn't really do anything at all. That, that The public is calmed by the image of a helicopter flying over. Hey, maybe they think that back to Chernobyl and say, maybe they're going to entomb it with some lead. No, they're not. They're not. That would be indicate that there's a serious problem there. If they start to try to entomb it, people's going to say, hey, what's, you know, it must have really been as serious as Patrick Penry saying in the FOIA documents. Chairman Jaxco. At this point, what is your best understanding of the source of the high dose rates? Jim Wiggins. You mean pool versus reactor? Chairman Jacksco. Well, just in general, is it essentially we think, I mean, essentially direct? Jim Wiggins. It's shine. Male participant. It's shine. Chairman Jacksco. It's shine? Jim Wiggins. It's shine dose. Not, not a yet yeah, shine. I don't think it's like that an airborne thing. It's the deposition or the source is coming from where they are, the pools. Chairman Jacksco, okay. So what they're saying is this unusual high level of radiation is not from nanoparticulates floating around in the air per se, although I'm sure that's, you don't want to be breathing around there at this point in time. But what they're saying is it's just the radiation emanation. If you guys have been following my broadcast, I've already spoken about the bulldozering of um, fuel rods and broken pieces of high uh, uh, rad substances and, and upon so doing they cut the rads down enough with the bulldozers they could bring trucks and people the Japanese were willing to go in there at the original dose rates as high as it was nobody's willing to go in there nobody's willing to you know it's a rare man that is willing to sacrifice himself and it better be not needlessly you better have a plan and my life better be as effective as possible so it's shine that they're talking about up near the reactors it's just the, the straight-up emanation from, again, we're, we're talking about MOX fuel, MOX fuel, which is one they want to bring to Tennessee Valley Authority here. And it's just like drones. They keep pushing and pushing and pushing for it. And if the American public does not draw a line and get involved, folks, it's going to come here. It's going, I, I can tell you all about Plumegate. I can give you details, and I can rage on and on and on and on and on. But at some point, when, unless people get involved, and don't think that people are involved now, you're being fooled by the mainstream, the alternative, and the independent, and the YouTube, bogus YouTube sites that really do not go into the substance, the meat of what I'm telling you. There are a few that will host Miss Milky the Clown's videos, which are some of my broadcasts. And I'm making a list. I'm going to credit everyone who is. I'm also going to call out people that won't do the simplest thing, which is hit the remix button. Boop and carry it on their own site so we can saturate YouTube, right? And there's a reason that's not going on. That's not what I'm here to talk about today, though. But be aware that, by and large, the suppression on this is intense. And, it, you know, it took me less than a week to have a good grasp on it and be able to write my initial article. As I keep on going, I have a much more fluid, uh, a coherent grasp of the nuclear situation, the Mark I containment, the radiation, the suppression, the, all that. So the sooner you get involved, the sooner you will become more of an expert. Are you ever going to be an expert? Probably not because it's a super complicated science. And I want to go back to recording in my studio is where, where I'm headed after this broadcast today. Trust me on that. Okay, so it's shine down there, folks. At that point, not so much stuff floating around, although there's discussion of plume and the fact that the wind's blowing from a west to east and what have you. But we're talking about uh, radioactive particles of such intensity that they're referring to it as shine. Jim Wiggins. Okay, speaking of deposition and things like that, a couple news. We got we reached agreement with NARIC. Again, N-A-R-A-C is an organization, a group of people that do plume modelings and, and other things of that nature. They're like consultants and analysts, if you will. We reached agreement with NARIC on what? Let me also say the president's source term, the one that, you know, you had agreed to, Chairman Jacksco, yes, Jim Wiggins. And it's, it's been a bit challenging to get runs from NARAC, but we understand the running those now. Chairman Jacksco, okay, Jim Wiggins. And, you know, it took some cajoling with them. They had some issues with how the source term was stated. I need to cut in here real quick. And also, a lot of times, they're in no hurry to get the, the, the 
the analysis back to them. They're, dra they're foot dragging. They question your source terms. It's a whole major mess because there's an element within that doesn't want the true information getting out. They don't want the worst case getting out. And again, here's the first indication. This is some of the knock your socks off information. I promise you guys, the president's source term, it's not the first time that now they're mentioning president. They don't say Barack Obama. We've got White House. We've got Hillary Clinton showing up for a sit rep map. And now we have someone saying the president. Is he talking about the president of the United Fruit Company? No, no, no. Is he talking about the president of the Moose Lodge? It's your local Moose Lodge? No, 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 no. Was he talking about, well, I'm assuming, okay, I have to assume, President of the United States of America, this is only a major catastrophe, largest world industrial, largest catastrophe ever known to man, you would think, and if he's not, well, then he's so bleeding incompetent, how did he get elected again? Oh, that's right, Diebold Electronic Voting Machines, and a foreign company counts the votes. That's how. So clearly the NARAC runs, good luck on them. They want to downplay them. They want to drag their feet. You know what? We are the most advanced country in the world. That's what I'm told. That's what I'm told. we got the best military, scientific technology, captains of industry, so on and so forth. If you if you float on a boat into New York Harbor and you've been in a hospital and had the nuclear medicine done to you and some kind of test involving the uh, nuclear medicine, then they have sensors that will pick that up. Okay, but we can't get reliable information as to radiation levels? Absolutely crazy, folks. Okay, back to the screen captures. Chairman Jacksco, okay. Jim Wiggins, and you know it took some cajoling with them. They had some issues with how the source term was, was stated. Chairman Jacksco, okay. Jim Wiggins, but again, I've seen in Audible, they've agreed to run it. Chairman Jacksco, okay, good. And remind me again what that is at this point. There's been so many back and forth on this. Jim Wiggins, yeah, I, you know, I still won't let anybody use the word worst case in the room here, and such in quotes. I still won't let anyone use the word worst case in the room here. Jacksco, yeah. Jim Wiggins, because there's about five worst cases. Chairman Jacksco, right. Jim Wiggins, what, what's the, the president's case, male participant? It's, it's bounding. It includes the, the fuel in the three reactors, the fuel enforcement fuel pools, it does not include the common spent fuel pool around Unit 4, and that's where a lot of bundles were, nor reactors 5 and 6 or any spent fuel pools there. And it's assumed a release based over a four- to five-day period. Again, this is we're, we're getting more in the direction of a realistic um, analysis here where they say it's gonna, you, you'd want to include 1, 2, and 3, uh, a number 4 you want to include because of the spent fuel pool, and, and you also want to do this modeling five or six days. Well, look, we're on day nine. There's no power. They're spraying it with cannons in a helicopter. It's not doing any good. Everybody says that doesn't do any good. It's just for show. So now we've had nine days here. And as I go through these documents and continue to progress forward, we find that many weeks into it, they know all of this. They know the levels of radiation. We have satellites that can pick all that. We have tech fantastic that's where all your tax dollars have gone, not in infrastructure, not in the schools, not in the health care, not to keep families together. None of that. It's gone from military type and scientific technology that will aid in the scientific dictatorship of the future. I don't know how else to put it to you. So, again, we're getting closer in the direction. We're using uh, the president's case, the president's case, okay? We're equating that to a worst case. Worst case is being used here. And now we begin to look and we say it includes the fuel in the three reactors, the fuel enforcement fuel pools, now we're getting more like it. Are you including MOX? Are you including plutonium? Are you talking about uranium? Are you talking about uh, uh, items, other radioactive substances other than cesium, other than iodine? Hey, that would be nice. That Independent guys are. Independent guys are. But not the government, not the industry. If they are, we don't get to know about it. I have no doubt they, they're taking in all the information they can. Now, really, they are. But they're not going to give the American public very much at all. In fact, what we do get is largely disinformation and downplaying a lot of gatekeeping. Male participant. For each of the units, and has a little bit of, of, I'll save realism on what we know is in each of the pools and based on melt core runs. Chairman Jacksco, okay. And it's based on melt core. Okay, good. Jim Wiggins, it's a percent of the total. Male participant, a percent of the total. Jim Wiggins, okay. Chairman Jacksco, okay, good. Jim Wiggins, and the, the saga of the Bechtel equipment continues. Chairman Jacksco, okay. The Bechtel saga, in and in, we'll go over this a little more. In a nutshell, early on in the documents, they discuss these pumps from Bechtel they want to ship in to try to get a high volume of water 
uh, to the, the the damaged facilities. Well, it's not that simple, though. You, there's red tape to get, fly them into the country. They, they're not going to hook right up. It's not the same kind of fittings. They have to station it somewhere and then bring it in. You can't even get into the plant because of the high rims until they bulldoze over and make a path in. And then these pumps, again, they're not easily hooked up. And the technicians they want to send with them, as we'll read in a minute in a screen capture, they don't want to go anywhere near Fukushima. They don't mind going over there to help you figure out how to work the Bechtel pumps. Again, $9.6 million they're going to sell them to Japan for. There's indication DOD, Department of Defense, is going to cover that cost. I don't know about ultimately who's going to pay for it, the American taxpayers or the Japanese. I don't know. But these pumps are millions of dollars, and, and I'm told they never, they never use them. They never use them. So, Jim Wiggins, the information is it's still on the plane in Perth, P-E-R-T-H. But I guess last night the funding got resolved. You know, you were informed yesterday that aid was having a problem with a with the cost, that the cost went up to two and a half per train. I think they're just talking about two and a half million per train. They refer to a train, which I gather is a, you know, one unit of these pumps. You might hook three or four pumps together in a series of pumps, and that's your train. You, you have one piece, a second piece, and a third piece. Now they're saying each uh, section of the quote-unquote train is cost went up to two and a half a million per train. Again, when nuclear plants are melting down and you got to have a high volume of water on it, you're going to have to pay that. You, it's not a question of price. They could jack it up anything they want. If it's something that's going to cool the plants in a meltdown, man, you don't. You just have to pay through the nose for it. Sorry to say, they don't give it to you. They don't loan it to you. It's not. It's not a friendly thing like that. We have dominated Japan since World War II. Okinawa, our military forces, we have an atrocious record there. Our soldiers are subject to our law, not their law. And I've read many accounts of. Uh, people drunk, raping the Japanese, driving over little girls in tanks, um, helicopters crashing with possible radioactive stuff on it. It's a whole mess. This is Chalmers Johnson books I'm referring to, the um, nemesis, uh, the rise and fall of the American Republic. There's, he's got a number of good books you can read about. So we have dominated Japan all these years. Do we give them a Narek plume model map? No, not unless the White House wants them to have it. And my screen capture, they don't. They don't. Do we cooperate with China? No, we don't even help them out either. But we got Japan. Uh, they are beholden to the United States government, I'll put it that way. He says, and Jax goes agreeing, yes, two and a half million per train. Jim Wiggins. I think the total was 9.6 million. Jim Wiggins. We put a, we, we persuaded aid to run a conference call last night at six and it had aid and State Department. He may be referring to USAID, USAID, and State Department, naval reactors, and is that's what it should have had. Chairman Jacksco, okay, Jim Wiggins. And we talked through, what, the merits of having this one train, at least, transported to Japan. The information I got on turnover was that, one, today, that there was a funding source identified. DOD stepped up to pay that rate. But right now, I guess there's some normal logistical issues, rolling it out, getting it in the airplane, getting a crew, that kind of thing. Chairman Jacksco, okay, Jim Wiggins. But Bechtel indicated, again, Bechtel, let me remind you, eh, not a good record, really not, because all industry is just totally breaking us down right now, aren't they? These are the ones that at Hanford, they knew the tank was was not uh, properly, had, had uh, containment issues, I'll put it that way, the giant tank had containment issues, and in order to receive a, a multi-million dollar bonus, they put the tank in on schedule, knowing ahead of time it was cracked and there was a problem, and indeed we had a leak, and it's been a nightmare ever since. So Bechtel, no, they, they are less than uh, uh, ethical uh, company, uh, less than moral standards. Much like GE, much like GE, which is convincing you they bring good things to life. Yeah, like nuclear plants that melt down, right, GE? Right, GE? you got the little elephant crawling across your commercial on TV. Everyone's smiling. The sun is bright. The the trees are in the wind. You can't see the radiation. But make no mistake, GE does bring good things to life. Well, if you consider radiation and a meltdown and a toxic plume and a cover-up and thousands of people dying a good thing to life, then yes, GE brings wonderful things to life, ladies and gentlemen. There's no doubt about it in my mind. And so we're into details of implementation regarding these pumps. Jacks go, okay, this is an opportunity, Jim Wiggins says, this is an opportunity for the industry types to, to contribute on this too. I've missed a section in that, but it's, it's not that critical. We'll go to the next screen capture. Because they know more about how to implement something like this. Chairman Jacksco, yeah, Jim Wiggins. But the on the other side, on the more also on the positive side of the ledger, if you recall, I don't know if Josh mentioned this to you, but the shipment came complete with two techs. Chairman Jacksco, okay, good, Jim Wiggins. There's two technicians that are being shipped. 
And I think that's from the vendor, not Bechtel. Bechtel. Chairman Jacksco. Okay, good. Jim Wiggins. And the technicians are there to provide assistance and instruction in how to, how to put the thing together and use it. Chairman Jacksco. Good. Jim Wiggins. But I, I sort of heard that they're not willing to go up to the site to do it. So, you know, they'll help, but, you know, it's a question of where they're going to help. Chairman Jacksco. Okay. This is a great one here because, again, you know, your government can say one thing, Diane Sawyer can say one thing, Alex Jones can say one thing, a number of YouTube channels can probably not say anything at all. And, however, this is the reality, folks. This is the hardcore reality that technicians know. Technicians know. Why is there an FBI agent? I've read at all our nuclear sites. Well, again, let's look back at the documents I spoke of in previous broadcasts where they collect the information from the nuclear sites, the rooftop grabs, the particulate samples, and when the stuff came over from Fukushima, again, they only want to talk about iodine and cesium, very short half-life, but they're very clear that there's two sets of information. One is a, uh, a briefing that the guy produces for the nuclear power plant, and the employees and the people that work there get it. You've got to tell them something. You've got to tell them something. They know something's going on. You have, to, you have to either lie to them, at least lie to them with dignity and class, and that's what they do. And then another section of information is passed up the chain of command. It's put in a password-protected database. I think NEI, DOE is heavily involved. All these guys are keeping it protected from you. There is no public radiation monitoring system in that it is accurate and the information goes directly to the public. There is not, and if you think you can figure out the, uh, what is it, the Department of, uh, what is it, the, no, it's the uh, Environmental, uh, the, what you call it? Our EPA. The EPA has a, a number of monitors, but again, if you can go to their site and make heads or tails of it, hey, you're doing better than Patrick Penry, who scored a 4.0 across the board in my college classes in comprehension and English. I'm very good at comprehending, but when I get to that site, I like I lose interest in just a matter of minutes because it's totally set up for you never to understand what's going on. Okay, so there's two texts they want to ship with the pumps. But the texts are very clear. They're not going anywhere near. They already know. They already know. Captain Jacks go, okay, that's good. Well, I appreciate it. And, yeah, I think that's it for now, so thanks. And, you, you know, there was one other question on top of my mind, but I can't remember it now. Jim Wiggins, well, we can say that, you know, the PAR, Protective Action uh, requirement, I believe is what that stands for, still looks good. In other words, that 50-mile-an-hour zone, Jacks goes, and Jacks go call 50 miles straight up. Uh, I give him credit on that. I give him anyone else. President Obama would have said 10 miles on it. No doubt about it. Jasko said 50, and that was a red flag where people said, start suing for freedom of information. Really, Friends of the Earth and uh, some other guys, start suing for information. Associated Press, you know, everybody but InfoWars and some of these other you know, sites that claim to be really want to uncover conspiracies and Jesse Ventura and these guys, no. But small guys actually were, you know, people that are real, that are genuine, genuine to the movement, folks. They filed early on. Associated Press, no, not genuine to the movement, but they're filing early on, and that's evidence in the documents. Now, do they go to write about the stuff I'm talking about? No. So, again, Associated Press, we well know, is corrupt and over. Please don't get your nuclear information from mainstream. Be very skeptical about your alternative source, because if they're not screen capturing from the documents and talking about all everything I have over these months and months and months, they're doing you a great disservice. And I have the most number of screen captures, the most number of material. If I've covered the most amount of material, I challenge anyone to show me a greater collection of FOIA documents, screen captures, and a more abundant uh, 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 selection of information. Please, I'd like to know about it. So the protective action requirement looks good, he says. And we'll let you know what those NARAC, again, NARAC does the plume modeling, We'll let you know at this NARAC what the president's run results in in California, Hawaii, and those places. We'll make sure you know that. Chairman Jacksco. Okay, good. Jim Wiggins. And we'll have and we'll then have to figure out how and there's some redaction there. Okay, this is a great screen capture. Let me expound upon it. The NARAC again, they do plume modeling, they're consultants. There is kind of like the NILU, which is a Norwegian company. They shut down early on when when they were cranking out a whole bunch of good plume models, they had to shut them down. These others who are beholden to them, they get to continue to operate, however, for they never will ever inform the American public what's truly going on. Here is proof. Let me read it to you again. Jim Wiggins says, the PAR, protective action requirement, looks good. 50 miles, good call, Jack. So good call, he says. And we'll let you know what these NARAC, what these other source term plume models, modeling for radioactive fallout, 
We'll let you know what these NARAC, what the president's run results in in California, comma, Hawaii, comma, and those places. I'm going to read that again. I'm going to read that again, maybe 10 more times. I don't know. The PAR looks good. And we'll let you know what these NARAC, what the president's run results in in California, Hawaii, and those places. We'll make sure you know that. But let's get it directly from the expert, folks. Shall we? I want to be very clear. We do not expect harmful levels of radiation to reach the West Coast, Hawaii, Alaska, or U.S. territories in the Pacific. That is the judgment of our Nuclear Regulatory Commission and many other experts. Furthermore, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention and public health experts do not recommend that people in the United States take precautionary measures beyond staying informed. And going forward, we will continue to keep the American people fully updated because I believe that you must know what I know as president. Okay, well, and I'm going to continue to play that because as we dig more into this and find out that they knew the spent fuel pool uh, number four was dry, and, and, and clearly in the 20th of these documents it's been dry all this time. I mean, they can hit it with a water cannon and dump some helicopter runs over it, but clearly in the documents, time and time again, they say that's just a, that's a show to keep people calm and convince people they're doing everything, but it really is, is largely ineffective, largely ineffective. Now, again, this broadcast is being recorded, um, and if by nobody else, by Miss Milky the Clown, which if you are not familiar with her, please subscribe to her on YouTube because she, she covers it all. Okay, she covers it all, and, and she goes into depth, she goes into detail, and she, she doesn't leave anything out, really. She's covering Plumegate to the highest degree where I cannot find anyone else. Well, there's a Kevin Blanche does a lot of good work as well. There's just a handful. There's just a handful. I'm going to dig into that more and give you a list of people who are willing to, even if they just remix a Miss Milky the Clown video, I don't care who they are. I don't care what troll they used to be. I don't care. I'm going to give you credit. I'm going to give you credit for it because I appreciate anyone who broadcasts and amplifies this. I'm just an amplifier, if you think of it that way. And if you join me and remix and broadcast this on your own YouTube channel, you're just cranking up the volume. You're cranking until finally one day no one can ignore it. No one will be able to ignore it anymore. Okay, look, I've only made it through 15 screen captures, but I want to keep this brief. I want to keep it focused. Every day this week, I'm coming back to do this. Every single day this week. I'm going to briefly touch upon a couple other things. I'm out of here. I'm back in the studio. I'm recording a number of songs. Confirmed Reptilian and Song X, because I don't have a name for it yet, but I'm stoked, folks. Just like the surfers say, because the computer's running, my software is working, I've got uh, some bass tracks down with my 12-string hammer, and it sounds awesome, man. So I want to get back in the studio and, and get to back to work on this. So I want to sum up. This is the segment for Plumegate tomorrow, I promise. I'm going to take it up at a screen capture 15. We're going to continue exactly where I left off here today. And every day this week and every day of every week, I'm concentrating on Plumegate, and I will concentrate on a secondary issue, but not that much, but enough to let you know who is covering it and, and, and maybe a brief run of who's not. But probably mostly I can help you out by saying, hey, here's the very few tiny scattering minuscule grains of sand of people who are covering it, like Miss Milky the Clown. Go thank her. Go thank her. Are we getting paid for this? No, we want the world to be a better place, man. And we're serious about it. We're very serious about it. Okay, so we'll pick up here tomorrow on Plumegate. Um, and, but don't go away. Don't go away. Okay, I want to read you a letter my mom wrote the other day. Let's talk about the whole gun control issue. And I, I think it's going to settle down anyway. Is it's a big move to sell guns is all it amounts to. Plenty of evidence Sandy Hook might be a complete freaking hoax. The second one in California, I'm starting to wonder about all of them because wag the dog is very easy to do when you have such a dumbed-down American public that lives for football and Hollywood movies. And they're just, they've been out of reality so long they have no freaking clue. They have no clue what's really going They just don't see the happenings and the events that are occurring right before their eyes.